This video is all about beans on toast, which is a very firm favourite snack or light meal for many people in the UK. Now everybody likes different things. Standard kind of beans on toast for me would be about half a can of British style baked beans, which are usually haricot beans cooked in a tomato and paprika sauce that is a little bit sour and a little bit sweet, but usually not spicy or smoky, spread over the top of two slices of toast. I like to butter it just after it's cooled a little bit so the butter doesn't completely melt. And I like to cut it this way so that there's no bits overhanging the edge of the plate. Of course, some black pepper, and some people insist on grated cheese on top. I can take it or leave it, but today I think I'll take it. And there we go, beans on toast. That's probably a reasonably standard presentation of beans on toast in the UK. Now, I think we probably should address the question people keep asking, which is why do British people put everything on toast? Which is a fun question. Bread is a traditional staple in the UK. What I thought was interesting is if you reframe that question for other nationalities and their staple foods, it starts to sound a bit weird, doesn't it? So anyway, yeah, bread is a traditional staple in the UK and toasting bread is a good way to bring back a slightly not so fresh piece of bread, which would have been a very common thing in days gone by. Anyway, that's standard beans on toast. Today, we're going to try to make atomic shrimp beans on toast. So if I was gonna make baked beans myself, how might I go about it? Now, this isn't gonna be traditional anybody's baked beans. I think baked beans do originate in America. The British version is something that has been taken from that and adapted. This is just me making baked beans, taking some inspiration from other people's recipes, but really just putting in the things that I think will be nice. I'm gonna use a mixture of pinto beans and black eye beans, just because that's what I have. So last night, I took a cup full of each of those types of beans, washed them and soaked them in water overnight. This morning they've swelled up to probably about twice their original size. There's a couple of husks floating in the top there. And I'm gonna drain off this liquid and give them a rinse. And then I'm gonna put those on to boil in water for probably about 25 to 30 minutes, just to soften them up a little bit. Now, semantic pedants will probably tell you that baked beans aren't baked beans unless they're baked in a ceramic dish in an oven. That's no longer true. Baked beans that you buy in a can are seldom cooked that way. However, I am gonna be cooking my baked beans today in a ceramic dish in an oven. It's a slow cooker, but that's a ceramic dish in a very tiny oven that's made to fit the ceramic dish. Prove me wrong. Taken from American, I think Southern style baked beans, I'm gonna be using bacon in these to give it some flavor and body. And I'm using what's commonly known as cooking bacon, which is a pack of misshapes and offcuts, and it typically is a little bit cheaper than just regular packaged bacon. But also often you get a bit more fat in some of these. So I've selected the fattier parts of the bacon because we do actually need the fat for cooking and everything else. So I'm gonna use about a little less than half this pack of bacon. So there's probably about 200 grams of bacon there and I'm using the fattier bits. That bit I'll save for something else. And I'm really just gonna cut the bacon up, not into lardons or anything fancy like that. It's just gonna be small and possibly quite irregular pieces. My beans have just come to the boil, so I'm gonna put a timer on and I'm gonna cook them until they start to feel a little bit tender. So the bacon is just gonna go into a large frying pan and we'll just give that a little fry to extract some of the fat and flavor and cook it off before that goes into the pot. I thought it'd be nice to use a sweet onion because then I can use more of it. No fancy techniques or anything, just gonna dice that into smallish pieces. And the onion will go together with the bacon just to cook together. So I'm gonna have six cloves of garlic in this. That might seem like a lot of garlic, but it's gonna have a long cooking time. And by the time it's done, it will just be a very mellow garlic flavor. So this video is kind of a collaboration with my friend Babatunde in Nigeria. Um, he's got a toaster now, so he can make beans on toast. He's planning, I think, to have a kind of Nigerian style beans on toast. There will be a link in the video description and in this card to his video when it's ready. And I do encourage you to check that out and please support his channel. He's an up and coming YouTuber in a very difficult situation. And his videos are really interesting because they show a side of African culture that perhaps you might not otherwise see. As you can probably see, the onions have caramelized a little bit. The bacon has just got a slight amount of browning on it. I don't want it to be crispy brown. Now we're just gonna put garlic in there. And since there is gonna be tomato puree in here, probably about half of this 200 gram tube of double concentrated tomato puree, I might as well fry that off as well. Now 
Again, I'm not sure that's strictly necessary because of the long cooking time this is gonna have in the pot, but we might as well, we're here, aren't we? Oh, and then finally, or at least finally for this pan of stuff here, I've got some sweet paprika, and I'm gonna put an amount that's probably about equivalent to two to three tablespoons full. I'm turning the heat off now because this burns really easily. But it does want a little bit of a fry, right? So off the heat because, yeah, paprika burns ever so easily. So that lot's gonna go into our slow cooker. And this is a non-stick pan, but there is clearly some deglazing to do here. And my deglazing liquid of choice is Cornish Ale. So this is Hicks Cornish Ale. This is a bottle conditioned ale. I specifically chose an ale that's not too hoppy. So this is a kind of ruby or copper colored ale. Very nice, incredibly malty and full bodied, not too hoppy. And there's a reason for that because the bitterness of hops, whilst it's a very popular flavor in beers these days, IPA is experiencing a, a kind of huge trend. The bitterness of hops in cooking is not necessarily a desirable flavor. Certainly not for me anyway. So I've chosen a nail that's not tremendously bitter, not heavily hopped. So that liquid, deglazing liquid, which is mostly beer, is gonna go into the pot with the other stuff. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, malty, slight bitterness, but it's on the tail end. The licorice notes in the middle, very aptly described as full bodied. Well, it's been half an hour and these beans, yeah, the white, the black eyed beans are starting to go tender. Pinto beans are still a little bit on the tough side. They don't need to be really soft, but I do want them, I do want to be able to kind of crush them in hand because they're going to get lots more cooking in the slow cooker, but they do need to be a little bit tender before they go in there, which gives us time to go and fire roast this pepper. Nothing at all fancy about this. This is just a red pepper. I'm going to stick it on a carving fork. This is a blowtorch that you might use for plumbing. Okay, that looks sufficiently toasted. So now into a plastic bag and we'll just cover that and let the steam loosen the skin. Okay, and we're not quite done ingredienting. I've got about, uh, what's that, about 400 grams of butternut squash. And people say you can eat the peel. I prefer not to. And that I'm just gonna grate. I want this to cook away completely so it's more like a kind of sauce than a vegetable. That can go straight in. It might seem like a lot, but it will cook down. Now, I do want a little bit of fire in there, just a tiny bit. So I've got four or five of these dried bird chilies here. They weren't dried when I bought them. If you buy little chilies like this and you don't use them all, I just put them in a pot and leave them out and they just dry out naturally on their own. Just lose the stalks and chop those up into little pieces, into flakes. So, yeah, you could add more chilli than this, you could add less, if you, none at all, if you don't like chilli. I feel like five of these little things in that size pot is probably gonna be just enough that it will have a nice background warmth without being a pot of chilli and without dominating the dish. That's about right, so that's gonna go in in a minute, but I need some herbs as well. So from the garden, sage, thyme, savory which is often called bean herb and this which is a random volunteer fennel plant that grew in my garden so it's gone to seed so i've got some fresh fennel seeds here and yes i am sure it's not hemlock so these herbs and i suppose fennel is technically a spice and it's, and it's seeds like this i'll just chop up herb and spice mix also just goes straight in there so the beans the beans after 53 minutes which is longer than i expected are now just tender enough that I can crush them. Crush the pinto beans. The black eye beans are actually quite soft because they cooked quicker. So beans drained, and actually I did give them another rinse. And in they go. And we're getting quite full up now, but there's a couple more things to go in. 
one of those things is this red pepper, which we'll find because it's been sitting in the bag, steaming in its own moisture, that burnt skin just comes straight off now. Just scrape that off with a knife. I'm not gonna to be too diligent about removing this. We'll get most of it off. The bits we don't get off, will give it a nice smoky flavor, a bit like smoked paprika. Well, almost exactly that. I don't know, maybe if you've got a really hot oven, you might be able to roast them in the oven like that. Whenever I've tried to roast them in the oven, it's a bit disappointing. Just get the seeds out. And then these, I'm just gonna cut into very small pieces, into tiny dice really, because they are, they are gonna cook down to almost nothing. They're there for flavor, not so much texture. So I've got a 690 gram jar of passata. All of that's gone in there. I'll just rinse that out and get a bit of water in there. I will actually put probably the rest of that beer in there for extra liquid. It's a bottle conditioned ale. I wouldn't normally pour the last little bit if I was drinking it, but because it can have yeast sediment in there, but I don't really mind that as a flavor in here. And let's give that a stir because I think that's gonna need some more liquid. Almost forgot this needs some sweetness. So we've got my honey that I brought back from Spain. And I'm gonna put in about three tablespoons full there. Soft brown sugar, again, about an amount equivalent to three tablespoons full. And about three quarters of a cup of water, just to loosen it up, because those beans will absorb more liquid as it cooks. So that's gonna go on high, because it's quite full up. And that now needs to be cooked for, well, I'm gonna cook that for about six hours probably. So we'll come back and look at it when it's cooking. Okay, we're a few hours into cooking now, and you might be wondering why I didn't add salt. Well, there was salt in the bacon for one thing, but I thought I'd actually wait until we get to this point where it's hot, it's cooked, a lot of things are cooked, and I can taste for seasoning and adjust accordingly. It tastes really good. It definitely does need a little bit of salt. Now, I don't know if it's really fair to call this baked beans since about half of it is not beans. But anyway, right, let's have a taste of that now. It's been adjusted. I like that. Right, so that's our six hours of cooking. Tasting time. Wow. Sweet, smoky, ever so slightly spicy, aromatic, malty, fruity, just loads of flavors going on in here. I'm quite excited to try these on toast because we put everything on toast here, right? So we'll have a nice thick doorstep slice of this farmhouse wholemeal bread. I didn't make this bread. We'll do bread another day. Get that in the toaster. Okay. And there's not enough room in my toaster for two slices of this at a time. And my butter's a little bit cold because planning is hard. And once that starts to soften a little bit, I think we need a bit more butter on there. Now I don't think my diagonal and then tessellation trick is gonna work with these slices of toast, so we'll have to think of something else. Okay, so on the plate, I think we're just gonna to have to do that and get the beans on there. And the moment of truth, very much not standard beans on toast. And since I have a very large pot of them here, I can be fairly generous and heap them up. Of course, they're gonna need a little bit of pepper. And because everything's a bit different today, the cheese I'm gonna use is Gruyere. Right, I think we need to get that to the table and give it a taste. Okay then, well, I've been looking forward to this all day. I'll tell you what, that is amazing. They're so tasty. Now that might seem like a lot of effort for beans on toast. And it was, except that what we've made there is equivalent to at least 10 cans of beans. And these will freeze superbly. So I can portion them out and freeze them. If I had the time and space and facilities, I could can them in jars and I could make my own baked beans in jars. Perhaps we'll do that in a future video. I haven't actually got the equipment for that at the moment, but that is an interesting idea. So would I always have this in preference to 
canned beans on toast? Probably not, because canned beans on toast is supremely easy and very satisfying considering the amount of effort it doesn't require to prepare. So I will probably, you know, this is not going to displace beans on toast for me. However, this is a real treat. And the flavour is just out of this world. That beer, I think, makes a big difference to these. It just really gives it massive depth of flavour. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you might have done differently, or if you've got a favourite recipe for beans on toast, then do let me know about it. I'll be interested to see that. And please don't forget to check out my friend Babatunde's beans video, which will be linked in the video description and in the card, and support his channel. That was Atomic Shrimp Beans on Toast. I enjoyed creating that, and I've enjoyed eating it even more. I hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.